Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today I'm going to be showing you the most underrated racing game of all time, at least in my opinion. So let's get right into it. I do have a list of pros and a very small list of cons. We're going to go over the pros first and then we'll do the cons last. And the main reason I'm talking about this game today is not just because I absolutely love this game and it's still a great racing game that I come back to to this day, even though it released for full release back in 20, I believe 18, and it's been in early access since like early 2014. So this game has been out for quite a while. If you haven't heard of it, that's the reason for the title. That being said, we're gonna start going down the list here with my pros. The first thing is even though it's 2022, I am playing it on PC at ultra specs, the highest it can go. This game is gorgeous. It's beautiful. It looks amazing. It just, I, I really don't know what else to explain. It, you can look at the gameplay right here, 1080p, high quality. It looks great. To this day, I mean, if this game came out yesterday, I wouldn't even complain. I'm completely honest with you right there. If this came out yesterday, I wouldn't even begin to doubt it or think that this is like, you know, an eight year old, 10 year old game. Next, it's very well optimized, surprisingly so, uh, for PC at least. I, I haven't played it on console, but I did have a friend who used to play it on PS4, said he had no issues. So I know it runs at 60 frames per second native, 1080p on P PlayStation 4 and Xbox without any issues. It's not on Switch or anything, it's only for PC, Xbox, and PS4. So if you're a PC gamer like me, it's perfect. It runs great. I have a 2070 Super and an i7 for my CPU, and this game runs without a hitch, easily 120 frames on average, and that's at ultra settings. One of the biggest things that I think most people will realize or see right away, other than just it's a very good looking game, is the destruction physics and just the physics in general for the cars. This game essentially is the Beam NG. If you guys have heard of that game, it's a PC only kind of car destruction simulator, if you will. This game is the Beam NG if it had an actual like premise to the game, if it wasn't just a simulator. Now, I think they did it perfectly here. This game, if you guys didn't know, is created by Bugbear, which were the people responsible for the original Flatout series. So Flatout 1 and 2. I think they also made the Flat Out Ultimate Destruction on Xbox 360 and PC later in the years. But that being said, they were most well known for the first two games in the series. And then it got, got sold off, I guess, to a different company that made the atrocious Flat Out 3. Don't even buy it. Don't even try it. Just trust me on that one. But those games were my childhood. So when I heard that Bugbear was coming out with a brand new game, just like Flat Out, essentially Flat Out for the next generation, you better believe I was excited. And they did not disappoint when it came to the car and overall physics destruction of the vehicles in Wreckfest. That was the biggest thing I was most impressed with back in the day in the original Flat Out games was the car destruction physics. Even on a PS2, they still looked very good. And honestly, to this day, it still looks very good. So seeing it in the next generation, and even by today's standards, this is technically last generation, which is wild to think, uh, it still blows my mind at how cars just crumple into little tiny heaps of metal. And, it, and it's just, it's nuts. It looks amazing. Like you can literally destroy a car down to a tiny four by four block of metal. Like you can rip off everything you can think of just by ramming it into the car, into the wall hard enough. And that's not just in destruction derby mode either. Like that's in the regular races. You can literally destroy cars by ramming them off the track and it's awesome. It, it just, it makes it feel like a genuine arcade racer. And you can tell they made this game for fun. And I think that's one of the greatest things about this game is the developers didn't take themselves too seriously when they made it. I will say I was a early supporter of the game back in 2015. I prepaid basically for the game. I supported them through their Patreon and I was an early access player and I got to give them some of my feedback after playing it because I just was that excited for it. And back then it basically was just a tech demo. It was basically beam NG and it was kind of fighting with them at the time. And they were trying to be in a way a car destruction simulator game. And I'm so glad they went away from that premise and actually made a arcade racer just like flat out because I think that they would have went with the more realistic approach. And by the way, back then when it first came out, the cars still had the same physics they do now, 
but they would literally get destroyed in like four hits. Like if you did a destruction derby match, which is what the only thing they had at the time, there wasn't any racing. If you did a destruction derby match, you ran into a car three times and your car were total because they tried to make it as realistic as possible, which it looked great, but in gameplay sense, it was boring and it was annoying, right? But in the final release, they have by default a pretty arcadey feeling destruction or, or arcadey feeling level of health for each vehicle which I think favors it in a lot of ways. It makes it actually really fun to play and jump into and not feel like you have to be very strategic on where you hit people with your car to keep it alive longer and yada, yada, yada. However, the cool thing is in the options, they do give you the choice to switch to different types of destruction or how much health your car essentially has when you go into a race or a destruction derby. And I think that's really cool. So you can lower it all the way to easy basically or slash normal is what it's called. And that's what it's on by default. And that's my favorite personally. Or you can raise it up to realistic or extreme. And honestly, realistic is pretty much what you'd expect. You get in a car wreck, your car is going to get totaled. If you're in a destruction derby, you can ram a couple cars and then it's going to start on fire. Extreme is a little bit overboard. I don't really understand why that's even an option, to be honest with you. It's literally like if you tap a car, your car is dead. But it's cool that they gave you the option regardless. Now, I already kind of talked about this, but there is destruction derby modes and there's also derby races and then there's just regular races. Now, even in the regular races, you can still run into other cars. You don't get penalties for whipping people out or running them over or whatever. The, the game all centered around arcade racing. Uh, so just trying to get to first place by whatever means necessary. But my two favorite modes by far are the destruction derby and the derby races. Now the derby races are a little bit different than regular races in the terms of you do try to get to the end or get into first place by the end, but at the same time, you're on these tracks that are literally meant to make you smash into each other uh, or essentially go off jumps and get air and roll your car and just cause as much mayhem as possible before you reach the finish line. And I love these. It really adds to that suspense and it brings back a lot of my childhood memories of Flat Out and Flat Out 2 because in those racing games, they were racing games, even though they were most commonly known for their mini games of like throwing the driver out of the windshield, the game I think was a little bit underrated for its racing. And that's why I'm really glad they brought it to the forefront with this game because it's just fun. It's the best way to describe it. There's, there's nothing boring about it. It doesn't get monotonous and every race is unique. Even if it's the same map that you go to, you know, restart it over and over and over again. You're always going to have a different and unique experience because of the destruction that can take place during that race. On top of that, there is a ton of different maps to choose from. I think in the game, there's like 25 to 30 different maps uh, right off the bat, and that's not including DLC maps or user created maps in the Steam Workshop, which, by the way, are super cool. So I'm glad that they opened that up so people of the community can actually still keep this game alive, especially with the multiplayer. And this game does support full multiplayer support up to 25 or 26 players, I think, in a match. And it's really fun and it works really well. I didn't really experience much lag or anything when I played it. And that was just a couple days ago. So it still has a functioning community. Last time I looked at the Steam like server stats, roughly like 300 players on average playing right now. But I really would love to see this game get back to the hype it deserves and to keep going for years to come until Bugbear comes out with a new game. And I really hope they're working on like a Wreckfest too. That'd be amazing. There's lots of different cars to choose from, and that's not even including the silly choices. So such as like buses, limos, and even lawnmowers, to name just a few. They really didn't take themselves seriously here, and I love that. They added so many different types of vehicles to choose from that are mostly centered around derby cars. You're not gonna see super fancy street cars in this one. I really wish they would have added that like they did in Flat Out 2 because Flat Out 1 is the most comparable to this one, I think, because Flat Out 1 didn't really go too overboard with the mini games or and, and it was all centered around derby cars because it was all centered around destruction. And the whereas Flat Out 2 kind of took that element, but brought it to like the burnout kind of feeling of racing where they added way more higher sense of speed and added more street cars. So like regular cars you would see on the street but doing these crazy type of destruction derby races and destruction derby events. So if they brought that stuff back or even in DLC or something like that with more high quality vehicles that aren't just, you know, derby vehicles, I think that would be really cool. And hopefully if they are making a sequel, that would be on their minds. It has wonderful sound design. I think the, the game sounds great. It's definitely a game you want to play with a headset on just 
the cars sound super realistic. The crashing, the crumpling of metal sounds really good. Uh, and the soundtrack is really good, honestly. It's it's more of like a underground rock, an alternative soundtrack, kind of like the original Flatout games. I love the soundtrack in those original games, by the way. Got me into a lot of the music I listen to today, if I'm being honest with you. And they definitely kept that here. I obviously can't let you guys listen to any of that because it's copyrighted, but trust me, the soundtrack is really good. Another thing too that I was very blown away by to this day is the AI, if you're playing on single player, is really good. It's really smart is the best way to describe it. A few people I saw in the reviews on Steam kind of complained about the AI, saying that they were too smart or they're too strong and it's annoying and it's hard. Honestly, with just the normal difficulty settings, like everything just by vanilla going into the campaign and playing through the races, I don't have any complaints when it comes to the AI. If anything, I like to applaud them for how they ran the AI because they're actually smart. If you have somebody coming up behind you and they're trying to pass you, the AI in this game doesn't just keep hitting the gas and going towards you or trying to go around you. They actually deliberately try to ram you out of the way or they try to push you into a wall or they try to fishtail you like in a real destruction derby race, right? It's what you try to do to them. I find that really cool. I think that's really smart and I like that about the AI. They also don't have like a super smart catch-up system either. I know some racing games, it's like, you never feel like you're too far in the lead because they just somehow get super speed and can catch up to you. Not the case here. If you somehow wipe out the competition by ramming them into a wall and you get way ahead, you can keep that lead as long as you don't screw up yourself and run into a wall. And trust me, it happens quite often in this game where you'll kind of lose control even if you have a pretty sizable lead. You'll you'll maybe burn out, run into a wall, flip your car, reset, and then at that time you might have somebody only a second behind you when previously they were 20 seconds behind you. It does happen. And I like that. I think, you know, again, it adds that kind of feeling of if you're a really good driver and you're really smart, you can win e easily when it comes to racing. But if you do make a mistake here and there, they'll be right there ready to take you over. And I think that's really smart. Again, you can change the difficulty of the AI if you want them to be tougher on you or dumber, I guess. But just on the normal setting, I think the AI difficulty is just perfect. And lastly, there is tons of different options for the player right off the bat. It's again, like I said, how much damage affects to the car. You can actually tune the vehicle before going into the event with its steering type, its brake type. If you want a front wheel or real wheel differential, there's so many different things you can do with the tuning, which is really cool. Tons of car upgrades as well. You can upgrade the engine, the suspension, the armor to make it stronger against hits and stuff like that. And of course, tons of customization for the color of the car. You can add decals. You can change up the spoilers and different body types. Now, it's nothing like you're going to get in customization like a need for speed. Like, trust me, it's nothing like that. But it's still cool they implemented this because they really didn't need to. They, they really didn't. So the fact that you can completely change the color of the car and everything that you're liking is really cool and neat. And I like that they give those options. And of course, upgrading the vehicle is nice as well, because even the very first car you can unlock in the game, you could end up swapping the engine later on and using it in the final events of the campaign, which again, I love because it doesn't force you to only use a, like one car one time and then you move on to the next one because it's better, right? You can customize that to use any car in any event. And then when it comes to tracks, you can also change from day, night, and then different weather effects as well, which is pretty cool. And again, you can change up the difficulty settings. And there's tons of other settings you want to go into single player events, like a custom game, especially if you're playing multiplayer with friends. They gave the player every option you could pretty much think of in an arcade racing game. And now let's go on to my small list of cons. Now, these are just things, honestly, I would love to see if they were to make a sequel. And I really, really hope they do. So Bugbear... If for some weird reason you're checking out this video and you've made it this far into the video, for one, I love you. And second, thank you for watching. But third, I want to just talk about some things that I've noticed over the years of playing this game that I think could be better or improved on with a sequel. So first, the cars honestly can feel a little bit too floaty with too poor of traction and they roll over pretty easily. And this is with every car in the game. I think it's just the physics engine they used. Yes, it's realistic, especially if you're driving on dirt roads and you have a lot of bumps and bruises along the way and you're driving these derby cars. I understand it's not going to have super tight traction. It's not going to have super tight controls, but I can see this being frustrating to some players to where every track and every car kind of feels the same in terms of its traction, at least from my experience. Even if you upgrade the traction with different upgrades with the cars, 
they all still don't necessarily get to that level of like tightness I would like to see in a racing game, especially an arcade racing game. So that is one thing I would like to see in the future. And again, have both sides, have some cars that are floaty and have less traction than some cars that are more tight. You know what I mean? Next are some of the events in the main campaign can feel a bit too difficult by forcing you to use a silly vehicle to win the race. And it basically what I mean by that is some of the races or the racing event, they make you use a car that's like has one wheel in the front and then two wheels in the back. So it's a silly, obviously not a real vehicle in real life, but they're using it as, okay, this is going to be a fun, silly event. But then they put you up against AI characters who are driving regular vehicles and you essentially have to win that race with this cruddy car that flips over at every turn. Now, I understand it's a challenge, but it kind of sucks that it all, all of a sudden, like you're having a good time and you feel like you're getting through all the races without issues. And then you get put up with this challenge and it just becomes frustrating. So in the future, have those as like, I don't know, maybe just an extra game mode, not nothing you necessarily have to do to get past in the main single player campaign. I wish the driver flew out of the car like he used to in flat out. <laughs> that honestly, I, did, I really miss that. Now, they do have some characters, like the lawnmower, for instance, where if you do crash, uh, your character does go flying, but that's really the only thing in the game that does that. There really isn't any other possible way to get your character to fly out of the car for regular vehicles, which is kind of a shame. I understand that they must have lost the rights to the flat out name and they didn't want to make a direct copy of that game. And I also understand they didn't want to center the game around the characters flying out of the vehicles like in the original flat out games. And because, like I stated before, the flat out games became synonymous for that feature and the racing and everything kind of got put on the back burner, which is a shame. So I understand why they didn't do it, but I do miss it to, an, to a degree and I would love to see it come back if they made a sequel. And the last thing, and this is kind of controversial, and I don't think a lot of people will agree with me on this one. I do think the game suffered because it came out in early access. I think the game would have done a lot better in terms of sales and had a bigger community behind it if they would have waited to release the game until it was full, like fully ready to go. Now, that being said, it's a it's a pro and con when it comes to early access games. And I've said this before in previous videos where, yes, having an early access game can help in terms of getting direct feedback from the players who want the game to succeed and developers can change things for the better. But it also can be a huge con because Again, you might have all this hype around the game when it first comes out, but it's obviously unfinished. So all that hype dies off and a lot of those new players who might love the game when it's fully out, don't ever give it the chance when it does fully come out because they already tried it in early access and didn't like what they saw. And that is a huge hindrance to a lot of games that I've seen in the past. It happened with Subnautica for, set, for instance, which Subnautica is a, an amazing game, one of my favorites of all time, and it deserves the love that it has now. But when it first released at full access, a lot of people didn't really give it the time of day because it was in early access for so long. And the people that played it in early access, maybe they didn't like what they saw because so many stuff changed between early access and the full release. And that's the same thing here. A lot of people played the early access version of the game. I know even Markiplier and I think PewDiePie did gameplay of this game when it first was in early access. But back then, again, it was, it was trying to be a serious simulator type game versus now it's an obvious arcade racer. So in the end, I think this game would have done a lot better if they didn't do the early access stuff, maybe just had it open to Patreons only or something like that so that they can get real feedback from players who want the game to succeed versus just having it open on Steam. It was not free to play, however, so don't get me wrong there. You did have to pay $30 to pay for it on Steam early access. I think even right now for the full price of the full release game, it's $30. Even if it was 60 at that full price, I'd pay it. This game is more than worth the price of $60, in my opinion. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to get my thoughts and opinions out on this game on Wreckfest. I still, to this day, hands down, believe this is one of the best racing games of all time. I'm not saying it is the best because it does have some issues, but I think it's one of the best and it's very severely underrated. It just didn't get the love it deserved, in my opinion. So I do hope Bugbear is out there still making content. I do hope they are working on a sequel. And hopefully we will see that in the very near future. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything I didn't talk about or anything you would like to give your personal experience with this game, let me know in the comment section below. I love hearing your thoughts on it. And with that, leave a like, share your support. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out.